again. So like I said, this is the second video for implicit differentiation. And what this video is really going over is some different applications of implicit differentiation. For instance, when we have to use implicit differentiation to solve for a second derivative, or if we're going to have to use that on a function to find the equation of a tangent line. So let's get started with some example problems. So our first example problem actually looks a lot like the last example problem of the previous implicit differentiation video. So in the last video, we found the first derivative of x squared y plus y squared x equaling negative 2. So now we're going to find the second derivative, which because we've already learned about higher order derivatives, we know that in order to find the second derivative, all we have to do is take the derivative of the first derivative. So to be a little nice and to save some time, we're not going to go through how to find the first derivative of this function again because we've already done that problem. So I typed the derivative up for you there on your screen. It's over there on the left-hand side. And looking at your first derivative, you can see that we have the quotient of two things. We have negative 2xy minus y squared divided by 2xy plus x squared, which means that we have division going on, which means that when we go to take the derivative of the first derivative, in order to find our second derivative, we're going to have to use the quotient rule. So your quotient rule is written off to the side on the right-hand side there. Just uh, to keep as a reference for you, get those formulas back in your mind. That way we make sure we know what we're doing. So let's get started finding that second derivative. So we know to find the second derivative, we just take the derivative of the first derivative. So we're going to have d dx of dy dx, which is going to be equal to d dx, or the derivative with respect to x, of the negative 2xy minus y squared all over 2xy plus x squared. Okay. So over here, the left-hand side, d dx times dy dx is going to be d squared y over dx squared, which is the notation we use for our second derivative of y with respect to x. And now we're going to have to plug into our quotient rule. So to make things a little easier, maybe we could go off to the side and find the derivative of both the numerator of our first derivative and the denominator, so that way we can just plug into our quotient rule and simplify. So why don't we let this red color be the derivative of the top? So when we go and we take the derivative of negative 2xy minus y squared, we're going to have to first employ the product rule because we have negative 2x times y. So we know that the product rule is just the derivative of the first term. So that's the derivative of negative 2x, which is just negative 2, times the second term plus the first term times the derivative of the second. So then we're going to leave the negative 2x alone, and the derivative of y is just dy dx. And then we have minus the derivative of y squared. So first we're going to use our power rule to get negative 2y, and then our chain rule to multiply by dy dx. Okay, and now why don't we let green be the derivative for this denominator function? So now we're going to find d dx of 2xy plus x squared. So again, because we have 2x times y in that first term, we're going to have to use our product rule. So we do derivative of the first function. So we're going to get 2 times y, because we're going to leave the y alone, plus 2x. Now take the derivative of y, so dy dx, plus the derivative of x squared, which we know is just 2x. We don't have to use our chain rule on that, because the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. So now we know the derivative of our top and the derivative of our bottom, so we can start plugging in to our quotient rule. Extend the page a little bit, because I think we're getting a little bit more room. Okay, so the first thing it says for our quotient rule is it's the derivative of the top times the bottom. So the derivative of our top function was, maybe we should move this down, I don't think we're going to be able to fit all of that right there. Okay. So first we're going to do the derivative of the top, so that's negative 2y minus 2x dy dx minus 2y dy dx multiplied by just the bottom by itself, so we're going to get 2xy plus x squared minus the derivative of the bottom, so 2y plus 2 x dy dx plus 2x 
all over the bottom squared. So 2xy plus x squared all squared. So now you might be saying, okay, well in the second derivative formula then, that equation, we have a lot of first derivatives going on, which we don't want our second derivative equation to be based off the first derivative. We just want to have x's and y's only there. So what we need to do now is wherever we see this dy dx term, so in these three spots up here in the numerator, we need to go back in and actually plug in what the first derivative is and then simplify so we only have x's and y's left in our equation. Okay, so let's go through and do that and do some algebra and try and simplify this. So we're going to get that d squared y over dx squared equals negative 2y minus 2x times, let's see, what was our first derivative again? It was negative 2x y minus y squared all over positive 2xy plus x squared. And we're going to get minus 2y times that first derivative, so negative 2xy minus y squared over positive 2xy plus x squared. Close our parentheses, all of that times 2xy plus x squared minus Oh, but it looks like in the first line I actually forgot a step. This was the derivative of the bottom right here. I never multiplied by the top, so we're actually going to get that negative 2xy minus y squared there in the end. Sorry about that. Hopefully you caught that mistake on your own while you're following through. So let's see, now we have to plug in into the second part there. So we're going to get 2y plus 2x times negative 2xy minus y squared. We're going to run out of room here. 2xy plus x squared plus 2x, all of that times negative 2xy minus y squared, and then all of that over our denominator. So 2xy plus x squared squared. Okay, so again, extend that page a little bit. Okay, so we need to do some algebra now. Okay, so it looks like we have some multiplication to do first. So when we first go through and multiply these two quantities together, when we multiply the 2xy plus x squared into these three terms, you'll notice that these denominators in here will cancel with that. So that'll make our lives a little bit easier. So now we're gonna get d squared y, over dx squared equals negative 2y times 2xy plus x squared. Got to remember to distribute that to all of our terms. Minus 2xy, just two, negative 2x, sorry, times negative 2xy minus y squared, since these two denominators will cancel with each other. minus 2y times negative 2xy minus y squared minus, still in our numerator here, we're going to get minus 2y times negative 2xy minus y squared plus 2x times negative 2xy minus y squared. That all squared on the top when we FOIL that through over 2xy plus x squared plus 2x times negative 2xy minus y squared. All of that's still in our numerator, so we still have it over our denominator of 2xy plus x squared, all squared. 
Okay, so let's see what we can do with this now. Okay, so it looks like we have a few similar terms here that maybe we can simplify together. So we see that we have this negative 2x times negative 2xy minus y squared, and we have one of those over here too. And if we quickly go through and we distribute this negative sign out here, we'll make this a positive. So this will become a negative in here, negative, and negative. So now we're getting that d squared y over dx squared is going to be equal to, we're going to do some grouping now. Okay. So we know that those box red terms are the same. And it also looks like we have these two green terms being the same. So let's see if we can simplify those together. So that means we're going to get negative 4y. Oh, nope, I lied. That one is not the same. Let's just ignore that because one of them has 2xy plus x squared term in it, and the other one has the minus 2y minus y squared term in it. Oh, so it looks like I just actually circled the wrong one. So we're still okay. So ignore that green box. We're just going to have this one. A lot of terms up here. Easy to make a mistake. This is why you have to be really careful when you do it. So we are going to get that minus 4y times negative 2xy minus y squared. And then grouping those red terms together, we're going to get minus 4x times negative 2xy minus y squared. And then we're going to get minus 2y, that first term, times 2xy plus x squared minus, and now we still have a complex fraction going on there in our numerator. So we're going to have to get rid of that eventually too. So minus that 2x times the fraction of negative 2xy minus y squared squared over 2xy plus x squared. So now it's nice enough that we've got it compact enough to write it in one line in our numerator and not two. Then gotta just rewrite our denominator. So now all we have to do in order to write a final answer is get rid of the complex fraction and then we can be done. So in order to get rid of the complex fraction, we need to multiply both the top and bottom of this large fraction by this little denominator in here. So this whole thing is gonna get multiplied. So we're just gonna write this down here. I'm gonna write, 2xy plus x squared up here. We're going to multiply that by the whole numerator and this 2xy plus x squared into this denominator. So we're going to multiply both of them in. So when we do that, let's see what we get. It's a very long problem. Probably should have picked a slightly easier one. That's okay. Go hard or go home, right? So we're going to get that the second derivative of y with respect to x is now going to be negative 4y times negative 2xy minus y squared times 2xy plus x squared minus 4x negative 2xy minus y squared times positive 2xy plus x squared minus 2y Got to close my parentheses. There's a crooked little parenthesis in there. Times 2xy plus x squared, quantity squared when we multiply that second red one by it, minus 2xy, just negative 2x, sorry, I keep saying that, times negative 2xy minus y squared, all squared, and then all over the denominator, which is now going to be 2xy plus x squared quantity. Now it's just to the third power instead of the second. So if you wanted to, you could go through and simplify this a little more. You could distribute, you could group things, factor some common terms out of the top, anything like that. But this is as far as we're going to go. So this is just showing you that whenever you go to find your second derivative of a function that you have to use implicit differentiation through, you're going to take the derivative of your first derivative, which is probably going to involve some sort of quotient rule or product rule. And then what you have to do 
is plugged back in after that process is done. And for all of these dy dx's here, and then continue to simplify. So the big lesson to take away from this long, hard, complicated problem is that when you take a second derivative or even a third derivative, you have to plug back in for those previous derivatives. You can't just leave the derivative signs there. So hopefully I didn't lose you or confuse you too much there. Hopefully your homework problems won't be that complicated or long. So if you can follow through with this one, you should be able to follow through with the other ones that you could be tested on or have homework problems on, anything like that. So now let's try to use implicit differentiation to help us find the equation of the tangent line. So we're going to find the equation of the tangent line to this graph at the point root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. So the first thing we know we have to do is we have to be able to find the slope at that point. And to find the slope, we need the derivative. So let's take the derivative of this function first. So we're going to get d dx of x squared times x squared plus y squared equaling y squared. So now we're just going to distribute that derivative. So over here, on the left-hand side, we have product rule. So, because we have um, the product of two functions going on. So we're going to follow our product rule first. So we're going to take the derivative of x squared first. So we're going to get 2x times x squared plus y squared, leaving that second term alone, plus x squared times the derivative of x squared plus y squared, which is just going to be 2x plus 2y dy dx, equals the derivative of y squared then, which we know is just 2y times dy dx. Now, since we're not actually just solving for the derivative, what we could do now is actually plug in the point for our x and y's, and then simplify and solve for dy dx, which I think that's what we're going to do here because working with numbers is usually a little easier than working with all of these variables. So we're going to get 2 times root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2 squared, which is just going to be 1 half, plus root 2 over 2 squared, which is 1 half again. And I'm getting that it's 1 half because when you square these things up here, you're going to square root 2 first. So root 2 squared is just 2, divided by the bottom squared, which is 2 squared, 4. So you get 2 over 4, 1 half for both of them. So now we know x squared is just 1 half times 2, root 2 over 2, plus 2, root 2 over 2, times dy dx. equals 2, root 2 over 2, dy dx. So now we'll just simplify and solve for dy dx. So root 2 over 2 times 2, these 2's are going to cancel with each other out here. 1 half plus 1 half, we can cross it out and write a big 1. And then inside here, these 2's are going to cancel as well. So now we can simplify and see what we have. Oh, missed 1, and over here on the right hand side, these 2's are going to cancel as well because of multiplication. So we're going to have root 2 times 1 here for the first term. So we're going to get root 2 plus 1 half times root 2, now distributing through. So actually, why don't we write that as a fraction? So doing this 1 half times this root 2 term that's left over, we're going to get root 2 over 2 plus, now distributing here, we're going to get root 2 over 2 times dy dx equals root 2 dy dx. So now we know that in order to solve for dy dx, we need to group them on one side. So why don't we just move this term here over to the right-hand side? OK, so we're going to get root 2 plus root 2 over 2 equals root 2 dy dx minus root 2 over 2 dy dx. Now we know from our previous example problem that we want to go ahead and factor out that dy dx term. We're going to get root 2 plus root 2 over 2 equals dy dx times root 2 minus root 2 over 2. 
And so maybe now we actually want to, before we divide, rewrite these th as one term on each side. So root 2 is the same thing as 2 root 2 over 2, which means that when we add them together, we can get a 3 root 2 over 2 equals 2 dy dx times, do the same thing over here, this is really a 2 root 2 over 2 as well, so we get 2 root 2 minus root 2 over 2, so that means we really only have 1 root 2 over 2, and so now we're going to divide both sides by root 2 over 2, or we can multiply them by 2 over root 2, cancel with those fractions, since dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So these root 2's cancel, these 2's cancel, so we're all good there. And now over here on the right hand, left hand side, sorry, the 2's here cancel, and these root 2's cancel. So we actually get that 3 is equal to the derivative, which is really equal to the slope of the point at the point root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. So now that we have our slope, and we have a point, now all we have to do is plug into that point slope form of a line to find our tangent line. So our tangent line is going to be equal to y minus root 2 over 2 is equal to 3 times x minus root 2 over 2. Now all we have to do is simplify. So we have y minus root 2 over 2 equals 3x minus 3 root 2 over 2. So adding root 2 to both over 2 to both sides, we're going to get our final equation as y is equal to 3x, and then minus root 3 over 2, minus 3 root 2 over 2, plus root 2 over 2 is going to give us plus, it's going to give us a minus 2 root 2 over 2, or a minus root 2. So finding the tangent line using implicit differentiation is the same process as it was before, except now when we take our derivative, usually it takes a little bit longer because we have to use implicit differentiation and then solve for our dy dx. But when you're solving for the, a number slope anyway, once you get your derivative down to that first hard line, just like we did in that one step up here, you can plug in for your x and y coordinate, so that way you can just work with the numbers instead of having to worry about your variables and messing up any of your algebraic computations. Okay, so I hope this helped. Hope I didn't confuse it too much with that long first example. Um, but have a great rest of your day.